Beginning in China thousands of years ago, documents were officially signed with a small personal seal instead of a handwritten signature. These seals could represent an individual, a family, a business, or a government ranking. Today, many cultures still use seals for official identification. Chop is the colloquial term, but there are many different names including Hanko in Japan and Dojang in Korea. A seal can be very utilitarian, or it can be something fun and artistic as well. Mid-century designer Alexander Girard was inspired by folk art toys he discovered in various cultures. Japanese kokeshi, Russian nesting dolls, wooden figures from Venezuela. He collected them and he created his own. Toys, said Girard, represent fantasy, imagination, humor, and love. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to design a personal chop, not just the seal portion, but a figurative handle as well functional pieces with the emphasis on fun. Now the handle could be built of many things, including clay, either kiln fired or air dry, as in a couple of these pieces. I find that wooden shapes and pieces remind me of vintage toys and of Alexander Girard's figures. Now these little wood shapes here are already shaped like people, so they're perfect for this project. I could use some wooden blocks, perhaps some beads or some pre-cut wooden shapes. These could make heads and hats, etc. The thing to remember is this is, needs to function as the handle, so you need to keep it small enough to fit in your hand. And make sure you use a good strong craft glue, wood glue, or glue gun to hold it together. Next, you can add color with paint or paint markers. Gerard's designs have been an inspiration for some of these figures. While they're drying, you can design the stamp part. Now this is a flexible printing plate. It has a smooth side that you can carve, and it cuts easily with scissors. Now on the back side, there's a very tacky adhesive. Now, I need to make my design first, so I'll trace around the base of my handle so I know exactly how much space I have to work within. And then I'll create a design just like this one. Now, in order to transfer my design onto the printing plate, I'll use a water-based marker, and I'm going to just color in the areas that I want to print. Now, to transfer the design, I just need a little bit of water over here on my printing plate. If I end up getting it too wet, the design might turn out blurry. So as you see, I'm just using a drop and then I'm spreading it out just so it's damp. Next, I'll take my design, place it over the plate, and using the pressure of my fingers and thumb, I am just going to transfer the design onto the printing plate, like so. Now you'll notice my design is backwards, and that's a good thing, because when it stamps, it'll be facing the right way. I could use linoleum block printing tools to cut out my design, but since this is a relatively simple design, I'm just going to use scissors. When it comes to inner spaces, like between the letters, this flexible printing plate is really easy to just bend in half, make a small slit, and then I'm able to get my scissors in the middle. All right, once I have it cut out, I'm going to peel off the backing and place it onto my block. Then just press it down really well. Now if you end up with a little bit extra hanging off, you can always take your scissors and trim it down. Now the traditional color of ink used with a chop is red, but purple's my favorite color, so I'm going to use that. But what if I wanted to make a stamp for clay instead of paper? Instead of using the stamp material, I'm going to use a little bit of air dry clay. You could also use kiln fired clay if you were doing this with a clay piece. But with wood, all I need to do is place it on the handle like so. Now I could clean that up with some small tools and then carve my design down here in the bottom, set it aside to dry, and there we have a piece that's ready to make an impression. 
Now, I think having a personal chop is a great way to leave your own unique mark, don't you? And plus, it just looks great sitting on my desk. So a PDF of this lesson plan with complete materials list and teaching standards is available at dickblick.com slash lesson plans.